Bergram live today on Capitol Hill. Let's talk about this a little bit more. The former Reagan economist Art Laffer is here and from the National Taxpayers Union, Executive Vice President Brandon Arnold as well. And you know, this gentleman, and Art, I'll start with you, is at, at its heart what Chad just set up for us, kind of an economic debate. Do we want to tackle inflation? Do we want to spend more money to, I guess, avoid going into a recession? Um, what do you think, Art? Well, I don't think it's an either or, to be honest with you. Mm. I think we're right, right now in stagflation. We're going to get both a recession and inflation. And when I look at what Joe Manchin did, it's shocking that someone actually would vote the way he believes to be the truth and be criticized for it by his fellow senators. This is not where we have monolithic parties against monolithic parties. Individual senators are elected and they should express their own views and vote their own conscience. And I'm surprised the Democrats have been able to bully all those other people into voting the other way, which is silly. It's really not Manchin's problem. It's Bernie Sanders and the rest of the Democrats that are the ones way out of the farm lane. Yeah, there's been no bullying Joe Manchin, who's really emerged over the last couple of years, Brandon, as a, as a powerful figure, not only in his own party, but in the Congress because of the way things are, are split. Now, Art might be right that this might not be an either or choice. There was an interesting piece, though, I thought, in Axios this morning, kind of looking at what some liberal economists, by the way, are saying about inflation versus whether we go into a recession. And it's not exactly what you would expect, maybe from some of them. We put on the screen, for example, what Josh Bevins, who's left of center, said, a recession directly reduces economy-wide incomes. Inflation does not. And later in his column, he said inflation, on the other hand, um, he, he, he said inflation, on the other hand, is pure redistribution in the short run, but does not directly reduce incomes in the aggregate. One person's cost is another person's income. So the whole point, I guess, of, of this piece is um, that we might be we might be better off uh, on one end or the other. Is it an either or for you? What do you think? I, I don't think it's an either or. I, I agree with Dr. Laffer here. We shouldn't be in this position. We're the greatest country the world has ever known. And we're finding ourselves in a debate over which poison we'd rather take here. Yeah. How about neither? How about we increase <laughs> supply? We increase uh, energy production here in the United States. We cut tariffs. Uh, we take on labor unions. We can drive down costs here and avoid a full-blown recession. We might very well be in a mild recession currently, but we can avoid a deep prolonged recession and tamp down inflation at the same time. Right. goes back to, of course, everybody brings it up, Art, the 70s, whether you would uh, and, and the people who argue on the inflation side said, boy, I wouldn't want to go through that again because the runaway inflation is much worse than a slowdown in the economy or, you know, to the point uh, that we just heard from Brandon, a mild recession. I guess is that a fair kind of comparison between the two? Would you, You'd want to avoid something worse. I don't know. Maybe we have runaway inflation already, but you want to avoid something worse than this getting really out of hand. Well, you know, having lived through the 70s and yeah. the 80s and been very, very involved in government and public policy, both of them are terrible. I mean, the 81, 82 downturn, you had the huge inflation spike there that I think is even higher than it is today. But let me tell you, this one's going to get there. It's going to get there and pass the 1970s. Is that right? It's going to get worse, view. you think? Uh, but yeah, I do. And but but when you look at it, we are in a recession right now. The first quarter was negative GDP 1.6. The second quarter, according to the Atlanta Fed, is down 1.3 percent or 1.5 percent. That's two quarters back to back negative growth. That's the traditional definition of of a recession. Right. The only question we have to ask, Connell, uh, is is it going to get worse? And uh, I I don't know if it is or not. But with these guys in charge, I tend to think it's going to get a lot worse. Well, when you say these guys in charge, you're referring, I assume, to the current administration. But at the end of the day, don't you think, and, and Brandon, you weigh in on this, is going to come up, how, how hard does the Fed really hammer this? Now we're led to believe they're, they're not going to go the full point at the end of the month in terms of raising rates, probably go three quarters of a, of a point, 75 basis points. But still, if the, if the Federal Reserve really comes in aggressively, even more than we think over the next however long, and, and hammers us on this, then this recession could be a deeper one if they, if they decide they want you know, to tackle inflation. They could do it, right? 
Yeah, I think that's absolutely right. And I was concerned when the jobs report came out a couple weeks ago, when the CPI report came out last week, that we were going to see a more aggressive response from the Fed. I think they've tamped that down slightly. Yeah. So we're looking probably at 75 basis points. I think that's good news because while we do need to cool off the housing market, for instance, it's already started to show signs of cooling and we shouldn't be too aggressive here at the Fed level. But my bigger concern right now is, is certainly what this Congress and the president are going to do in fiscal policy, even a slim down reconciliation process that has prescription drug price controls, that has uh, Obamacare subsidies that are inflationary in nature, could be bad news. And of course, there may be much worse news further down the road once additional economic data comes out. They may be able to pry Manchin loose here. Yeah, final word on that, Art, because even with Manchin uh, stepping in as he, as he has, you know, the president you could use executive action to move forward on climate, for example, and there could be more money spent, right? Well, let, let me just say that I think the Fed should get out of the interest rate business and let market rates settle in what they would be, just the way Paul Volcker did. I mean, that would put interest rates at 10-year bond yield at 14, 15 percent, something like that. And they just should not be using price controls, and they should get out of that business. And yes, I, I do think that the mansion has done a great job so far, and we've got a lot of other stuff. But my view is this is not a pretty picture coming along. And executive orders, I would suggest that they may not uh, pass Supreme Court muster. Hmm. Interesting. Um, as always, Art Laffer, good to see you. And uh, Brandon Arnold, thank you as well uh, to both of you for starting us off here on a Monday. You know, we mentioned right as we came on the air, um